This is a video clip from episode 10 of the Average Joe Lawn Care Show with Matt Martin. So being like being a DIYer myself, you know, wh what has it been like for you to see a lot of the DIYers, you know, YouTube channels uh, coming on like a lot and that obviously piquing a big interest for, you know, homeowners and stuff getting into lawn care. Has that been like a positive thing in your mind about, uh, maybe giving lawn care a bigger voice, be, even though it's not necessarily the professional side of things, but it is the, it's at least the, it's some aspect of things, even though it's DIY. Yeah. And I can, uh, I can kind of give you some insight on, on how it's perceived a little bigger than that. And then I'll kind of, I'll kind of, uh, my take on it. Um, on the on the bigger picture of things, you know, I can tell you at least how like like pro lawn care guys kind of view the the uprising of the DIY lawn care community, um, and it's it's kind of this break. It's it's very weird when you get into having your own spray business because, you know, the first few years you experience record growth. You know, it's like oh man, you're picking up customers and you're getting referrals, and it's like grow 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 grow, and then you kind of hit this point in your business where you need to get out of your business and work on your business. And that is a very difficult transition because the majority of people who go into business for themselves in lawn care are great technicians and they're not business people. And so trying to disassociate yourself as Matt, the technician to become Matt, the business owner is a, it is, it, it's almost traumatic, I think is a, is a good way to put it because it's such a stark contrast of what you founded the whole idea of you being a business owner is about. And what happens is, is that you end up capping your growth because you're not quite ready to give away being a technician. And you hit what I call the plateau and, and there's a, there's a revenue amount where you hit the plateau and maybe you have one other person that works for you and you kind of split the duties and, uh, and, and you do, you hit the lawn care plateau and the people that are in the plateau look at it. And I'd say there's, there's probably a bit of, um, of, um, I'll use this word for lack of a better word, a bit of a, a threat or maybe, um, a little uneasiness, I think is more accurate way to put it because, you know, these guys just took a huge risk to go into business for themselves and, and are out there and there's people that are giving away quote unquote trade secrets. But as those people do relinquish control of the business and, and work on the business instead of in the business, it's almost like they completely forget about it because they're so overwhelmed with taking on all these new tasks and ideas and uh, strategies. And now they have to become a marketing expert. Now they got to be a web design expert. Now they got to be a content writer. Now they have to be a social media content producer too. And then I think it's easier for them to look at it much more uh, benevolently and and more of a of a strategy and a partnership and something uh, where you can uh, easily commingle there. Now from my perspective, and and I'll be fully honest with you, and I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Um, I am I am a a, a purist at heart. I, I have an 80 year old man's soul, um, and and that's just the way I am. You can you can ask my wife. I'm I'm just bizarre in that way, and so for for me that when. When you have uh, uh, no control over the, um, uh, the the types of information that are being put out there, there are so many times I turn on a YouTube video and I'm watching it and I hear a recommendation being made with authority and I just face palm so hard. Um, and it's, it's not often, it's not everybody, I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody, but I've turned on videos before and it's it's just something that you know if if the right person was watching it could be pursued in the wrong way in my and you, you know we've talked about this before if the if there is an as a young person the the green industry even from the government perspective and uh and it's not like I'm some big fan of government and I think there needs to be oversight and all this and that, that that's not the direction I'm going this is nothing to do with politics but um, the the people like the pesticide police, which there are, there are legit pesticide police. Every state's Department of Agriculture has pesticide police because when you're dealing with a pesticide, you're taking on a huge responsibility, whether you think it or not. It has the potential to take life. You may not think of plants as living, but they are. 
and you are working with a chemical that is designed to take life. And that is a big responsibility. And you're only typically a molecule or two away from how it affects the plant, also being able to affect a human. Yeah. So yeah. that's the other thing you have to keep in mind as well. So the industry, the old heads who are kind of the, the patriarchs of the industry right now are, are retiring. Um, they're, they're past their prime and they're slowly but surely over the, one of the statistics I saw is over the next five years, 50% of the industry will be retired. Wow. So there's a lot of new young blood coming up in the industry. With that, that also means there's going to be new young blood in the pesticide police part of things. And a lot of these guys are working in in you know bureaucratic type environments, you know, with lots of oversight and stuff. I mean, it's it's government, right? And and it, all it takes is the right one of them to need or look for an opportunity to prove themselves, prove their worth, uh, to get uh, uh, for uh, to get to get excited by mishaps, missteps, even misspeaks that they see on the internet, and pursue it as aggressively as they can to get it either rectified or taken down. And my number one big fear, because already, you know, uh, uh, lawn care in general is the whipping child, is the whipping post of, of agriculture, right? So, uh, you know, we, we look at glyphosate, for instance, and I'm, I'm not vying for glyphosate safety or any of that. That's, this is, this is a, a total apathetic point of view, but this is reality, what happened. Um, with the glyphosate court case that, that was was carried out um, there that lost their insurance as long as they distributed glyphosate. And so we had major distributors lose the ability to sell glyphosate into turf. Did wow. that happen in agriculture? No. We bury we bared the brunt of the of the 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 court case there uh, upon our shoulders. We were the ones who had to suffer the consequences of someone else's actions, right? And so with that being kind of a model and that being repeated, and we can go back on that with MSMA and other things that have been pulled from, you, you know, Dersban was pulled from us long before it was taken out of ag. Uh, it's, it's repeated that typically if something is deemed a problem, they take it away from turf first and try not to take it away from agriculture. With that being the background and kind of the, the, the history's trend, my fear is that it takes one person coming up in the regulatory type of style to see what we're doing as being and being overcritical of it. And even to the point where even if we just misspeak, they come after it. We already have a negative connotation on us. Oh, we're luxury. You know, it's, a, it's, it's flaunting luxury. It's flaunting wealth. When in actuality, there's a very big environmental piece to what we do. We can kind of move into that next. But how I feel about it is that I'm 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 nervous, excited, and cautious, all at the same time. That makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, you're so you're saying you're nervous, excited, and cautious for a lot of people taking interest in lawn care and becoming more enthusiastic about it in the like in the YouTube world. That's what you're saying. Y y yes, uh, because I, I you, you know with. And this is one of my catchphrases I say is oversimplification is devaluation, sure. right? Yeah. And I feel like that um, in, in the game of algorithms and content strategy, uh, the easier you can make something appear, the more attractive it is. Because if you can cr cram four years of experience into two minutes of teaching time, then, you know, people are going to want to watch that. Yeah. And people are going to put that into practice because, you know, literally in two minutes, I can learn how to do whatever it is I need to do. That's the beauty of YouTube, right? But unfortunately, when you're caring for something that is a living organism, it's hard to reduce the maintenance of that organism into a two-minute soundbite or a, a five-step soundbite. Um, it can be done, but there's a lot of asterisks that need to be in place in order to uh, provide some caveats and options and uh, account for some of the variabilities you see between my neighborhood and your neighborhood.
Catch the Average Joe Lawn Care Show live on Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Lawn Guardian YouTube channel. It's always fun interacting with the audience in the live chat during the show, so we hope to see you there. If you couldn't catch the live show, watch it recorded on the Lawn Guardian YouTube channel or listen to the audio version of it by searching Average Joe Lawn Care Show on podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast.